Good evening, welcome to episode 9, season 1 of A Brief History of Nothing. I'm Ray. And I'm James. And tonight, we're going to start off with a bit of political comment. Because this isn't controversial at all in any way. No, 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 no. Um, right, <coughs> in Australia, our treasurer in the federal government is a man named Joe Hockey. Who is part of the Liberal Party, who is actually the major conservative party in Australia. Yes. That's complicated. <laughs> anyway, our beloved treasurer, Joe Hockey, noticed the slight tone and sarcasm in my voice. Not that anyone will pick up on our, on our political leanings at all. No. no. Um, it's been accusing, because we the government has a paid parental leave scheme, mm. and businesses have a paid parental leave scheme, and some families have been dipping into both. Okay. So they can spend more time with their, like, new children. Yes, yes, yes. So, but, our dear beloved treasurer, Mr. Hocking, Mr. Hockey, I should say. Hockey is in the sport. It's yes. spelt the same way. Yeah. Um, for double dipping, and they, he is calling those families uh, frauds and rorters. Now, while, all the while, he is claiming $270 a night Mm. in um, travelling, travel, travel um, allowance, um, but when he's in Canberra, but he's staying in his wife's $1.5 million home in Canberra while claiming this. So if these people who double dip into the um, parade, parade parade release release scheme are uh, frauds and rorters, what, what is, is Mr. Hockey? Yeah, um, yeah the, the, the pot has a lot of carbon on it, we, we yes, think. Yes. Um, but Hello, also, Mr. Teapot, I'm Mr. Pot. Yes, yeah. Um, but also, <clears throat> I mean, this is what annoys me is that tens of billions of year go to mining companies that are making tens of billions a year. Yes. And, and yet we can't, oh, well, the pensions are unsustainable and, oh, the doll's unsustainable. That's ridiculous. And we still have to pay through the nose for... I mean, universities in Australia, um, you can get what's called a HECS debt, so Higher Education Contribution Scheme. So basically, when you can afford to pay your degree, you don't have to pay it straight away, but when you can afford to pay it, you pay it back. Um, yeah. With yes. relatively low interest. But you can't go bankrupt on that debt at all. And also, you... Um, yeah, and, and universities are making ridiculous margins. Oh, yes, yes. And the interesting thing is that in Germany... University, university education is free. It is free, and then they tried to make people pay for it, and they did that for a couple of months, and they went, no. No, uh, and, and uh, my, my fervent belief, belief is that um, from, from kindergarten through to your PhD, basically. To your PhD should be free. Yeah. What I would if like you want to people to be educated, mm. charging them, you know, and, and as Kate Blanchett said, she's thankful that universities were free when she went through and did her degree. Yeah. Um, you know, that's... I just don't get the fact that... It, but yeah, that just stuck in my crawl, the fact that he's rotting the system and then pointing the finger at other people who, okay, they may well be rotting the system to a degree, but they're doing it for good reasons. Yeah, they they want to spend time with their new their new son or daughter. Yes. You yes. Know, who he's, is an infant and he's incapable of feeding and clothing themselves. Yes, he's doing it just so he can make he make his life a little less you know cut down on his expenses and that just stinks. And of course, he's getting a six fit, six digit salary as it is. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. As it is, like like the two hundred and seventy dollars would mean a lot to him. Bullshit! It would mean bugger all to him. Yeah. It's just that he he does it because he can do it, and that's just wrong. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> yes. Now yeah. that we've done with the controversy, and people are probably going to shout at us in the comments. <laughs> Please shout, shout all you like. I love it. I love a good, robust discussion. Yes. And and just name calling. Yes. It's usually usually political discussions on the internet usually just go into name calling. Usually. Yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yes, there's a bit of that going on too. Yes. <laughs> Our sciencey thing this week. We have Northrop Grumman, the company, the aerospace company, that does a lot for NASA, um, is trying to um, put a tender out 
to put to to because an asset has like a program and they're trying to you know explore the different parts of the solar system still like it's been going on for ages they're trying to put out a tender to have and now I did look the name up and I've forgotten it well done me um, they're trying to basically put a, a aerial inflatable aerial platform through the top end through the atmosphere of Venus about 70 about 70 50 to 70 k's up to take measurements of the Venusian atmosphere now <coughs> Venus has always been a bit of a tricky one. Like, it's hot enough to melt lead on the surface, most days, like during the day. But isn't, isn't, doesn't Venus have runaway um, um, greenhouse effects? Essentially, yes. Well, what happened was that they, they suspect that it's the, it just got too, it was a little bit too close to the sun, and mm -hmm. so it had, like, when the sun was cooler, when it was younger, mm -hmm. when it was a lot cooler, um, it had oceans like Earth. But the problem was it just got too hot and the oceans evaporated which built up heat inside Venus, which made the problem worse, and it just had a runaway greenhouse effect. Yes. Um, and now, it actually, it snows on Venus, believe it or not. It snows lead. Well, that, yeah, I mean, <laughs> useful, very useful. And, and, and its atmosphere has high amounts of sulfuric acid in it. Oh, good, so good, a good... And you'd be transparent, really. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> or if you hadn't been crushed like a drinks can. Because the uh, pressure actually, is ridiculous. Yeah, well, there is that slight problem. Yeah, like landers, like the Russians tried to put a couple of landers on there, and they took a few photos, and then it just, they both both landers got crushed like dr like drinks cans. <laughs> it, is, yeah. it is ridiculous. Um, and second, second science thing. Yes. We are closer, we're getting close. The, this, this started, the research into this started in 2013, but as of earlier this year, they are working on a new universal flu vaccine. So you don't have to get a flu vaccine. I've got the flu vaccine. I don't know if that shows up on the camera, but I got it this afternoon because I don't want to, you know, a few minutes of discomfort is better than feeling like death for two days. And also passing it on to someone who may pass it on to a very elderly person or an infant because the flu, I mean, it's, it's an inconvenience for most of us, but a lot of like, people die of the flu. Influence, yes, well, the, the 19, 1918, 1919 flu epidemic um, mm. killed millions. And the interesting thing was it was particularly lethal in the United States um, because the soldiers, because it started out in Europe, mm. and soldiers then returning from World War One brought it to the United States, and yeah. they had literally no immunity to it at mm. all. Yes. What they've found is they can train t the T cells to attack the actual stalks of the H protein. Now, the reason you get H one number and N another number, that's the two proteins. They have names, and again, because I have a really bad memory, I did look them up and I've forgotten them. But... So we'll just call them H and N. H and N. Right. <clears throat> the reason why you need to get a flu vaccine, or the new flu vaccine comes out every winter, is that those different strains have different proteins on the outside, so your immune system will only recognise one particular flu virus, so you catch another flu virus, and it goes, what am I doing here? I don't know. So you can only train like one virus at a time. However, that would be have, hard training viruses. Well, training your immune system to pick up one virus at a time. <laughs> However, they have found that the the stalks on the H protein that stick out from the virus are pretty much universal. Right. So what they're thinking, they can use this so that they can train the immune system to attack that particular part of the virus. So you've pretty much got yourself, for all intents and purposes, they're all um, a a universal flu vaccine. Okay. So lollipop sales are going to go through the floor. They're just saying. Okay. Because, you know, the kid gets a lollipop after your immunization and then, you know. Okay, right. Yes, it's not a problem. Now, you wanted to talk, you had a science thing about, um, and your phone just is crying because it's hungry. <laughs> yes. yes. It's so in, professional. Yes. <laughs> in the, the, um, the rural, um, um, Town yeah. of Goulburn in, in New South Wales, Southern Highlands, they've had a very strange phenomenon happening where it essentially rained tiny black spiders, and after a while, the area around the town was just covered in spiders' webs. If you can get to find pictures of this, type in Goulburn and spiders. I'll try and link, I'll see if I can link it in the description. It's still going <laughs> through plain text. It's annoying. <laughs> but, it, it, it looks surreal, 
And apparently, I was reading about a man who had went out walking through it, and he said, "You just, you know, you just end up covered in spider's webs from from the um, from all of the web. They're just literally everywhere. It just coats the ground, and you get covered in spiders." Um, yeah, it's um, quite a different thing. So if you're an, arachno an arachnophobe, um, that don't must go any goblin. <laughs> it must be about as close to hell as you could get, I would assume. Yeah, we, we have we have relatives that are close relatives that are severely afraid of spiders. Yes. Um, so yeah, well, that's 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 uh, uh, even I just even I just go there. <laughs> <laughs> spiders are nice. Right, and mice eat people. Spiders are nice. He's afraid. He's terribly afraid of spiders. I am horribly afraid of frogs. <laughs> and yes. I live late in Queensland, in like in the subtropics, where there's a lot of tree frogs and also cane toads. Yes. And oh, cane toads particularly. I look, <laughs> when I'm driving yes. a taxi, if I can see one, if it's safe to do so, I aim for it and run it over. Yes. And I'm a vegetarian, so that's <laughs> saying something. Yes. Now, train wreck corner. Yes. Give like, us some train wreck. Well, the reason I call it train wreck corner is because. That the the podcast Halloween in there, which is by Peter a guy called CGB Gray and Brady Harron. I'll link for it in the description. Um, but they have Brady Harron likes to do this thing called plane crash corner. So he discusses aviation disasters or what have you. I want to do a train wreck corner. So in Philadelphia, so you want to do this show? We're doing this show. Yes. <laughs> it's a bit of a train wreck at the moment. We had a guy go, "Oh, this is boring," and put like a great string of Zs. We know, okay, we're just starting out. We're getting, finding our feet. Anyway, so the, um, <clears throat> the, this train in Philadelphia, when it was supposed to, this, the, the speed limit on the line is 70 mile an hour, but the, but this particular curve was a, f a 50 mile an hour curve. Yep. Um, the train driver went around it at 100 miles an hour. Now, that's six, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. Um, yeah, and that d doesn't work well. No, that works mm. like tipping over. Yeah, seven people were killed. Um, I think the engineer, the engineer has survived and is currently in court. <laughs> funnily enough, yeah. um, and the and I think a couple, a couple of hundred people. This is a passenger train. A couple of hundred people were badly injured. Um, so yeah, that's that's our little our little train wreck corner. And you wanted to do on this day. So what what's happened on this day, the nineteenth of nineteenth of um, May? Well, for all those in the U.S. Oh, Abraham Lincoln was nominated for president on this day, mm -hmm. and also in the U.S. Um, was the um, on this day Mount St. Helens erupted, and uh, so it's just an America themed day. I'm going. <laughs> yes, well, it's we have American train wrecks, and now we have American <laughs> things. Yes, it's obviously <laughs> a shit day. <laughs> Americans obviously must try and avoid the 19th <laughs> of May because yeah. just don't worry. About it. It's like September 11. Just we don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, although, oh, they didn't do too bad. I mean, yeah, he had a few positive points. I mean, about... he, he, he abolished slavery and resolved the American Civil War, so... Yeah, but the interesting <laughs> thing was, if he could have resolved the American Civil War without abolishing slavery, he would also have done that. Yeah, that's the that's slight the, problem. His, his, his thing was to, to reunite the Union. And, and uh, that's why... Uh, Yes, he did a lot. Of, he's a very interesting man. I've read his biography, and um, fascinating man. And mm. uh, some of his court cases, some of his arguments, because he was a lawyer by trade, and some of the arguments he used in some of his court, court cases are fascinating bits of logic. Um, there's particularly one where um, the um, people who owned a, um, a, um, a river steamship company was trying to fight a railroad company from putting a bridge over this, this river. Mm. And he uh, he we got involved, and uh, he uh, oh, I can't remember exactly now. Mm. I think he worked for the for the for the railroad the company the railroad company. But yes, the, it was a fascinating bit of of uh, a fascinating argument on um, how he got got uh, his way in court. The interesting other thing about Abraham Lincoln was the fact that he had a very high pitched. The people, when they, you see people in person, they, they talk in this sort of, you know, deep and, you know, presidential way. He didn't have a deep voice. He had a high-pitched, whiny voice. It's bizarre. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> yes. So let's let's go. And yeah. we have um, Pope John Paul. Yes, on, on his birthday is on this day. Um, Pope John, John Paul II. He was born in 1920 on this day. And um, Dame Nellie Melba. Now Dame Nellie Melba was an Australian opera singer at the beginning of the or the late 1800s, early 1900s, and she was born on this day in 1861. Now, your review of the week isn't actually a book this week. No, no. It's a television show. Yes, there's a new reality television show um, on the Nine Network here in Australia. Reality um, TV shows. Oh, good. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Now, now my, the TV show is called um, what uh, Married called? at First Sight. Now, I'm not normally a fan of reality shows. They're not normally my biggie thing. It's such a misnomer. It's, like, it's not reality. It's, it's manufactured reality. It's not reality. <laughs> yes. But the premise, the premise of this TV show intrigued me. They, they get three experts, you know, psychologists and various people, and they, after all the people that applied, they then bring it down to a, a manageable group, and then they match people up. Um, using you know what information they have on the on, on the questions and everything the observations and questions that they've asked these people and then they match up um, several couples I can't remember exactly how many so I watched the first episode last night where they matched up two couples uh, one couple was uh, Lachlan and Claire and the other couple was Michael and uh, Ronnie now these people um, basically in their mid-thirties and still hadn't found the person that they wanted so they decided that, you know, why not, give it a whirl. How do I apply? <laughs> he really have... wants grandkids. I'm not, because, as mentioned, me <laughs> father and son, he wants grandkids. It's, it's just now, not happening. <laughs> there was quite a bit of controversy leading up to this, various groups in the media and general public and all you know, how you know, how could they do that and they were making a mockery of marriage and, and various things. It was so it was quite a controversial thing. But, you know, a lot of people end up with arranged marriages and so why not? <laughs> so, you know, like I say, these people knew what they were getting into, decided to commit to it and I'll see other So it was quite interesting seeing how they did that. Um, yeah, to... Come on. <laughs> Stop pausing! <laughs> We're getting comments saying, oh, you're boring. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think we know the culprit now. Get on with it. Me. This yeah. century... <laughs> Top Gear has Captain Slow. You have Captain Boring. That's <laughs> why we need a second camera, so I can go in and, and investigate whole video editing software, and so I can cut out his ums and ahs and... Yes, you need, you need to cut my arms and eyes out. Now, overall, look, I found the show entertaining. Um, I, I, I think that the, they, the premise is fine, and I think that um, I'm looking forward to next week. So, yeah. Uh, I and hope... I'm usually working when these things are on because I'm a cab driver. <laughs> yeah, so no, well worth a watch, I think. Mm. If, even if you're not into reality TV, I think it's well worth a look over. And... Uh, See what you think. That's probably the best way to go. Now, before we go, um, our, our, you want to talk about our, our bad joke competition? Yes. Come on, people. Pull your fingers out. Give us some good, groan-worthy jokes. Stick it in the comments. Um, as, it, as we're going at the moment, the guy with the Zeds is winning the bad joke competition. <laughs> so, 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 come on. Pull your finger out. Okay. Yeah, and I forgot. Look, I know. Last... last we, I did forget to put it on there. It was like Saturday, and then I, oh, I didn't put the email address in there. But I think uh, you know, in comments would be fine. Um, although it'd be best if you email us so I, we can then then message you privately so that you don't have to give your address like over the internet. It's not good. Um, so yeah, if you if you if you can, and then e email us. Um, I'll put it in the description. I'll promise. I will this time. I'm sorry I didn't do that, but I will put it in the in put the address in the description so that um, you can email us privately so we, then if we decide who wins we can then message them privately so you know your your details are kept confidential so we've got a nice we've got a nice uh, fountain pen and, and, and a watch and, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a nice fashion watch not huge prizes but hey they're nice um, well yeah. we're only starting out it's not like we can give away a grand or something yes yes all right.
my uh, my uh, my business is coming up with the money for the prizes. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, okay, that's about all for us tonight. That, that's it for us. If you like us, um, like the, hit like, hit subscribe, comment that we're boring because we are. Anyway, yeah, all, all comments are welcome, and we it's, won't we. We all, we, criticism is a very helpful thing. It's a good thing. That, you know, tell us what you think. Yeah, and it's great. what we can do, and give us something to talk about. Like, yeah. and, and I would like to like do something like build a Lego model on here, or, or do something like you can see it because we're doing yeah, a tell video. Tell us what you'd like to see. Yeah, yeah. that's that. That'd be good. But all right then. If you want to make your life more fun, pull down your pants and slide on the ice. Bye.